So next up is a panel about DeFi and NFT. I will be a moderator this time. Please come up. Maybe we can start with a self-introduction. Oh, check, check. Can you guys hear us okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Akshi Federici. I'm a partner at Kraken Ventures. We are an independent venture fund, and we focus on the seed stage. We do both token and equity investments, and we, both, we do both fintech and crypto investments. My personal background before, Kraken, before starting Kraken Ventures, I was at Kraken. Before that, I was at status.im, for those of you know, who are familiar with them. Um, and prior to that, I was at Consensus in Brooklyn. Before that, I was at BlackRock, Condé Nast, BCG, as well as um, a big data company that got acquired by MasterCard. Very happy to be here and look forward to the discussion. Thank you. Hi. Um, we just met in the green room. Um, and it's good to be on the panel with you. Um, so, yeah, my name is Richard Muirhead. I'm managing partner at Fabric Ventures. Uh, and we have been kicking around the uh, Web3 investing space now for nine years. Um, uh, beginning in 2013, we sadly kind of just missed the opportunity to invest in Kraken actually in 2015, early 2015, uh, but did invest in Bit, Bitstamp bef before that uh, and many tens, close to 100 different projects um, over the years, including Decentraland, which you will recognize and obviously is pivotal in the development of the NFT space and um, uh, other players like Maker, who are pivotal in the in the DeFi space, um, and we're 20 plus people uh, around the world, with best part of half a billion AUM, and um, yeah, that's where we are. But yeah, looking forward to chatting. Great. So we've been talking about NFT investment the whole day, but I think this is the first panel to talk about NFT and DeFi. Uh, what you know, this concept may be new to a lot of people. What does it mean to be a merge between NFT and DeFi? I would love to hear, you know, your perspective. Do you want to go first? It would be polite to let you go, but I'm happy to take it if you want. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, we, we prepped with a couple of questions. But that was one question you, uh, we, we, didn't <laughs> we didn't actually prep with. Um, so, uh, look at, so let me, Rift, just quickly, um, uh, I think maybe it's sensible quickly to understand the audience and, and work out what people want to know about here. So first of all, um, how many people here have been uh, in this space actively making investments or participating in networks or DAOs for um, you know, more than a year? Hands up. Got it. Good. More than two years? More than three years? Yeah, so we've got some good, good experience, excellent. So I won't ask the next question, which was like, you know, who owns an NFT or who's invested in some DeFi? I think it's like, you know, more experience than that. Um, and then, you know, for, from our perspective, uh, the way we look at the world, and this will probably be pretty familiar with people, is that there is, you know, layers of infrastructure, layer one, layer two, developer tools, uh, things that help with the life cycle of software and so forth. Um, and you could probably put into that space, you know, uh, critical things like, you know, wallets that are now NFT friendly as well as increasingly DeFi friendly or um, in uh, platforms like Unstoppable, so wallets like Argent, platforms like Unstoppable, um, mm -hmm. and they focus on usability. Um, and then we separate a little bit between kind of uh, DeFi and, uh, and, well, open finance and open media, but I would say that um, there is uh, increasingly an intersection and uh, to give us a chance to move on to other questions because I'm not sure that there's a great answer. Um, we we see the innovation as being uh, the way in which software now can make and keep financial commitments and that's as relevant um, uh, to uh, integration within um, the media world, sports, entertainment and gaming and so forth 
as it is to uh, pure finance or to any other sector. But given we didn't, pr didn't prep, I didn't know what you were... No, I think you, you did a really doing. good job. You're talking about the infrastructures are all like, they're, they're always like, they're always DeFi and NFT related, whether as wallet, you know, sh you know, scalability chains, as well as like different verticals could, you know, could, could are related as well. Yeah, so, uh, so I think from our perspective, um, you know, DeFi is a little bit more, let's say, mature and has been around for a little bit longer, let's say, than the, than the N NFT peak happened. Um, so some of the companies in our portfolio from a DeFi perspective are early on were, you know, Hashflow, Ponte, Macala, et cetera. And then on the NFT side, we have been not as active uh, because we are relatively a new fund. But LimeWire is one, and then Snickerdoodle is another one where it's interesting that they're... Hi, guys. Um, so apparently LimeWire team is here in the audience. Uh, but for example, Snickerdoodle is doing something really interesting where they're looking at NFTs as cookies for the next you know, Web3 implementation or e-commerce. So from my perspective, I think you know, when we look at DeFi, um, I'm in particular excited about the CeFi, DeFi integration and bridges because at some point, CeFi consumers, if they can be brought onto DeFi, that's actually quite exciting. Um, another place that's interesting for me on the NFT side, even though you know, so we started off in the art world, is thinking about um, physical assets being kind of, let's say, digitized using NFTs. Of course, there's like, you know, property and there is, um, you know, art and there's music, etc. But I think it was, I think it was this week that JP Morgan said something about, you know, um, you know, being very interested in physical assets or the, the financial, you know, financial products being, you know, um, brought over to the NFT side. So I think that it, you know, I think each of them is interesting. They've been um, innovating at, let's say, a different pace. Um, in terms of the interaction between the two, of course, there are some plays around NFTs being used as financial instruments or you know, being able to take out loans against certain NFTs, etc. And, and that whole aspect of NFT slash DeFi is interesting, but I still think it's nascent. The questions around whether it's liquid or not liquid are all questions that we kind of grapple with. And so... It, you know, at least for us, on both of those fronts, we really try to dig deeper into infrastructure plays. What is the end utility to the consumer? Is this a long-term bet, et cetera, as opposed to sort of one-off collections or marketplaces, et cetera? Great. Um, so, Richard, you've been quite seasonal so far. I think you back a lot of the, all the projects we know. Uh, we'll also hear about, like, what are some of the things that I guess you want to... You, you think it's uh, related to this? I think there's so many. But <laughs> yeah, next, next phases of in investment. Um, I think, well, again, sort of looking a bit more bro broadly, the, the reality is that, you know, D DeFi is destined to replace the entire financial system and NFTs replace kind of basically everything else that is obviously um, non-fungible. Uh, so it's incredibly broad. So it's like trying to address the question of what is the intersection of those two is... It's like saying, you know, what, what are the opportunities for investing in, in software? I think um, there is a characteristic, though, um, of when you look at markets for non-fungible goods um, uh, in terms of creating the market-making capabilities, the, the pricing, the price discovery capabilities, um, uh, the way in which you might obviously embed... Uh, uh, an NFT, for example, in, in a game or in your profile or, or and so forth that are specific to that. Um, yeah. uh, Very interesting area. Uh, but NFT, for example, is, uh, is many, in many respects, is kind of like the, the dream of an auction house. Uh, so it's something where you can balance scarcity with the, supp the supply of the underlying goods. Most auction houses make about 70% of their, their money from modern, you know, contemporary art because it's, you know, run in additions like that and there's, you, you can... Um, you can make a market because there'll be a, a version of what it is you're purchasing that has changed hands in recent history and you can get a good price. Um, they don't make the money from, you know, the, the kind of classics, the, the, um, the masters where there's one um, Basquiat or one Monet or whatever that changes hands every, you know, umpteen decades. That's, that's not so helpful for them. So um, you can see it in their economics that there is uh, immense opportunity for building markets around uh, NFTs. It just depends, you know, obviously, ultimately what they're going to deliver upon. Um, uh, I think people massively underestimated the significance of PFPs, NFTs. 
um, they, they didn't understand that something that uh, people will identify with that emotively and marry with a wallet that has the ability to transact value and then could obviously be the key to, um, uh, you know, cultural experiences, gaming experiences and so forth uh, was a, a critical um, and valuable component of uh, a whole new, you know, brave new world of infrastructure that people wanting to, to build um, and uh, highly motivational to communities. And at the end of the day, it is motivated communities that get everything achieved in the world, in life, since the beginning of history. So that's valuable in itself. Yeah. A lot of good points. You wanna... So is, is the question, you know, what are the exciting trends within NFTs? We could do it, yeah. That's good. Yeah. So I think, you know, I, I think the NFT space... Um, is still, from my perspective, on the art side, a little, a little bit illiquid, and so we are a little bit sort of cautious around that in particular. But I think that um, we are seeing quite a bit of innovation on the end of making NFTs, let's say, accessible to the common user. So you know, anything where you know you can make it easy to, um, let's say, deploy your NFT or share it on your, you know, social media remove the need necessarily to you know, require even crypto for it, et cetera. I think eventually, this is kind of going back to when I first got into the space, like back in 2016 and 17, was um, you know, education is part of it, but in order for us, to your point, to make this mainstream, the user experience even today is a little bit clunky and foreign. And so to the extent that there can be um, you know, innovation that makes it all kind of seamlessly run in the background where people, I don't think the, the users out there necessarily, the mass audience needs to or wants to worry about you know, what chain something is on, opening a wallet, figuring out if the transactions are, you know, can't be done using a credit card, et cetera. So I think that just in general, our space, not just in the NFT world, in the DeFi world, and I think the, the talk right before this was about payments, all of these things are kind of coming together to create a seamless user experience that essentially leads to kind of mass adoption. So anything that's being built in that space, to me in particular, is very interesting. Yeah, and um, are we wrapping up? Is that what you're asking? Oh, it's just time. Okay, fine. Um, so I think um, there's a kind of marriage made in heaven between the kind of power of... Um, Web3 in the sense of open, permissionless networks, that is, you know, open standards that, that can be forked at any time, so that drives, you know, innovation in the interests of the whole platform, the whole user and community base. Uh, permissionless in the sense that anybody can come in and participate, preferably at low cost, sometimes there's a buy-in, but then there's digital economies that form where guilds obviously kind of, uh, you know, lend people a kind of buy-in for some of these communities if necessary. Uh, permissionless also from the perspective of devel development, people can come in and build on the platform. So that's incredibly powerful. But um, I think it gets, you know, yet more powerful, and we've seen that, when you marry it with intellectual property. And the vehicle for marrying it is, you know, the NFT. Whether it be original intellectual property, I think it's very exciting to see how people are doing that. Whether it be existing ones, and there's obviously a huge number of deals going around, down particularly around um, sport, although I would say uh, that you're going to see uh, a few deals done over the next year, three years, um, but the, what I have observed is that the titans in the space are really just taking a, a, a watching position on this. Let's do a deals for a couple of years. Let's understand quite how significant this can be before we shift up to another gear and g get to the level where we're truly reimagining, as, as the phrase goes, fandom um, for people, say, in the sports arena. So we're just that is to say, we're just at the very beginning of that shift. So the marriage of open permissionless networks with the way in which you can capture intellectual property um, from whether it be from Serena Williams or whether it be from someone in the stadium, um, and you know what what it is that they have done and which events they've gone to, and that can all be captured, you know, in a sense equally as participants in one, say, sports, you know, community, sports DAO, whatever it is. That's super exciting, and I think if you try and sort of sort of uh, canter into the future and kind of look back again and imagine what it'll be like, and it's, you know, building on the, the point you just made very well, it's gonna be one where, you know, we walk around and we have um, a wallet or a series of wallets that probably can interact with uh, the, the rooms we're walking into and, and with each other, 
Um, and certainly the events that we've you know, participated in, we won't go and kind of scan a QR code for kind of you know, proof of actual presence or whatever. It will all happen uh, seamlessly. Um, and we will, uh, we will care about privacy as well as usability, because, um, uh, but I do think that privacy will be um, thrown to the side whilst these networks take off first and will retrofit different elements of privacy because by definition the fastest growing networks will, will win. Humans are not that great. They, they tend to panic you know, after the horse has bolted and then sort of close the barn door, so I think it's going to be natural that way cycle. around. That's the natural cycle. And, um, but that's the direction it's going to go, and I think one of the developments that's interesting, there's, you know, NFTs we were saying are applicable to real-world goods um, and business documents, they're applicable to uh, your, you know, your image, your avatar in, in the metaverse, they're applicable to every single micro-action you take in a social network. And again, my observation talking to the, the current titans from the Web2 space, is that, I mean, we've seen met the meta rebranding, we've seen them state, we want to be a Web3 company. Um, we've seen some guy try to take over Twitter, let's see what happens there, uh, unclear. Um, and, but they're all moving in the direction of being de decentralized. And, but I would wager here that the chance that they can shift their business model to fight against uh, the open metaverse that frankly we can build, um, uh, tiny DAOs to kind of massive communities intermeshed around the world is slim to none. But I think that's important actually for society, not just for business, that uh, the open metaverse wins. Yeah, so I think it's interesting what you said about NFTs and sports and like distinguishing that from NFTs and gaming because I know that gamers and NFTs are sometimes at loggerheads. Uh, but I think a couple of other things you said that were really interesting. A, I think that uh, brands, big brands, are getting into this space in a, in a material way when it comes to NFTs. That's something that we are seeing um, has shifted in the, in the recent past. The second thing I would say on the NFT side, which you touched on as well, was community, right? So community is one thing from my perspective that is a little bit, um, let's say, different between DeFi and NFTs. And so that's something that's, that's also exciting. Um, to watch for. I think eventually in the future, the vision is that every single item in the physical world will essentially be an NFT digitally, right? So that's, that's kind of the, the future that we are looking at. Um, and yeah, I think there's, there's a ton of innovation in the space that's going on and um, it's exciting. Great, so we have like a couple minutes left. If you can say one more thing to the audience to make a lasting impression, you know, what, what do you guys wanna say? Um, look, we hope to be we kind of, I, I didn't really go into it, but my background is building companies in Web 1 and Web 2, uh, and then we kind of try and, you know, help, you know, founders, entrepreneurs build, build stuff in Web 3, and as I said, we've been going for the best part of a decade, uh, and we uh, have almost 100 projects we've worked with, and we are rolling our sleeves up, literally metaphorically, and writing checks from 100K up to you know 10 million um, you know bucks euros whichever currency you'd like to choose not bitcoin um, and um, and we um, yeah super excited um, uh, to talk to any of you about that and then the final thing is that I, I, I was struck by some crazy desire to to kind of get involved with teaching a course in portfolio management um, actually at UCL the other day is uh, uh, and so I, I did that, but I realized that from a, from a Web3 perspective, it's pretty easy when you're trying to work out what proportion of your portfolio to you know, uh, buy or hold or sell. It's pretty easy. It's just hodl, hodl, and hodl, isn't it? So, I mean, I think from my, my perspective, especially given the markets right now, I think a, a lot of people are having you know, questions about what to do in terms of joining the space or, you know, you know, leaving the space, et cetera. I think from my perspective, uh, this is perfect, like what happened in the, in the market, because um, it helps everybody, VCs, builders, you know, people who are trying to join the space, et cetera, really focus on the basics and the fundamentals, right? So what is going to be a long-term trend? What does the roadmap look like? What is it that we are building that users will actually want as opposed to what we think they want? And I think all of these questions are getting fleshed out now. Um, I think the tech stack versus 
I don't know, four or five years ago is infinitely better. And so from my perspective, you know, we're here to stay. Crypto is too big to fail. And uh, the more people that can help build, build, build forward, that's what we need. So it's very exciting to see we have a full room right now at this time. So, you know, thank you all for coming. You know, your participation is actually bringing the space to the next level. So thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thank you. Thank you.